Okay, so in this clip, right, what I hope to do is make your spreadsheet a little bit more intuitive and easy to follow. Sometimes when you have a spreadsheet constructed like this and straddled over a number of worksheets, the spreadsheet is not that intelligible. And it's useful to put a menu page in. So to put in a menu, a menu page, just put in insert worksheet. And then I will give it a name menu. And then uh, you set out uh, maybe a series of buttons that when you click on the button, it brings you to a particular area that you want to attract uh, a user of your spreadsheet to and maybe give them some explanation of what's going on. So menu page is actually quite useful and it sort of has the effect of turning your spreadsheet into a piece of software, in particular, if you have some models that are developed that are running estimations. So for instance, to do that, you need to go into the developer tab and to ensure that the developer tab is there, typically you would come down to options and then you would come across to customize ribbon and then you would just make sure that's ticked off. And if it's ticked off, then developer tab will appear. And then if we want to put some of these buttons in, these form controls, I come to button for form control, just the very first one here. And then you see the the mouse has changed shape and then I have the crosshairs. And if I just double click, it allows me to put a, a button in that position, okay? And I can, if you're building a number of these buttons, you probably want to keep the buttons reasonably uniform. And because the spreadsheet is kind of organized as a series, a grid, if you like, with a series of cells, we could dimension the button to fit into a particular space size. Uh, now, if we, click on that button, it does nothing, right? So it's uh, shooting blanks. And to give that button uh, a function, if you like, then what we should do is record a macro. And the simplest way we could write the macro, the macro is a piece of code, but for what we want to do in terms of creating a menu page, uh, it would be suffice here to follow a number of actions. So for instance, we could say record a macro and uh, remember what the name is, macro one, okay? And everything hereafter now has been recorded. So if I take the mouse and then position the mouse in the next worksheet and put the, the mouse then located here in cell A1 and then stop recording and then go back to my button one. Again, nothing is going on here, but to give it that functionality, I right click, or hold two fingers down on the mouse pad and then assign macro and keep in mind the macro we just record as macro one. Okay, so we've done that and we can then click on the button and it's performing that operation. So why is that useful? Well, that allows us to navigate quickly from one worksheet to the other. And again, it would be useful if we could give uh, maybe a label here so if I right click or uh, two fingers on the mouse pad together and then edit text, we might just say, look, this is going to bring us to the Black Scholes model or whatever model we have or whatever worksheet. Um, it doesn't have to be the name of the worksheet. It's just telling us uh, where we need to go, right? So it's really uh, a roadmap for, or a label useful to the reader who comes first to the menu page. So again, we click on the button and it brings us here. Now, uh, that's great, uh, but perhaps uh, what we might like to do is to put in another button here and say, look, I'd like to go back to the menu page, right? So before we had um, the button was here, now we could have the button, another button here, and we go to the same set of steps. So insert forms, controls, button form control, the shape of the mouse changes to crosshairs, click, creates a new button. It'll be button two. We can set it up in such a way that it takes a uniform shape. That's easy to accomplish in Excel. Uh, we can say home, 
for instance, just to say, look, it'll bring us back to the menu page, or we could even put menu. Now, if I click, nothing happens. I've got to give the worksheet that function. So how do we do that? We record a macro. It's macro two. And we are now recording. So go back to the menu page, position our mouse in A1, stop recording macro, come into Black Scholes worksheet again, two fingers down in the mouse pad, edit, uh, assign macro, should I say, assign macro. So assign macro. Assign macro, and that's macro two. And now when we touch this button, it'll bring us back. And then I want, if I want to go to implied volatility, we create another button. Okay, so insert form controls, button form control, shape of the mouse has changed. Redimension the button so that it has a uniform shape that's generally a little bit more aesthetic than if you have irregular size buttons, right? Uh, put in a label. We'll say implied volatility. It's another topic or area that I want to address. Implied vol, perhaps volatility. Let's see what fits in here. All fits in. That's great. Click. Nothing happens. We need to create a macro that guides us here. Again, record macro. It's now macro three. We'll note that. Uh, okay, we position our mouse up at A1. We want this uh, button to navigate us to implied volatility. So we position our mouse here in A1. That's fine. And then uh, we stop recording the macro. Then come back to the menu page. We two fingers on the mouse pad, assign macro. Remember, it's macro three. OK. If we want to go to the Black Scholes model, it brings us here. If I want to go to implied volatility, it comes here. If there was a specific graph that I wanted to take a look at, for instance, I had originally explained this with gold seek, we could uh, again redimension. So insert and insert, and I'll do a couple of things. Uh, one, I'll create two buttons here, one to demonstrate where particular images and the other as a home button. So um, developer tab, insert, um, and we'll create a, a new button, redimension it. We're going to call it the home button. Right, and you can say home. Just relabel it, home. And we can try using the macro two, perhaps. So assign macro, macro two, I think brought us home. So let's try that. And it works, it's bringing us to, so macro two brings us back to the first worksheet. Now, we we are on the menu page. I want to go to implied volatility, but then I want to draw the attention of the user of the spreadsheet to something that's very critical or very important down here. It's a setup, it, it, if you like, it's the, just an image that I've embedded in, but I want something uh, just to bring us down here. Okay. And um, okay, let's create, um, put in another button, insert. Um, so uh, developer tab, insert, forms, controls, button, button five, redimension. And I'll just put in here, um, because I know it relates to cold seek, 
and I want that to be that image to be available to the user. We'll just say gold seek, which is a handy function in Excel. And gold seek, if I touch that, nothing happens. So I record the macro, macro four, and we'll take the mouse here to A5, and then we'll scroll down to the point where that image is just level to here, and then position the mouse here. So basically that has the effect of scrolling down, so stop. And then it's macro five, we attach here. So attach, assign macro, and is it macro four? No, macro four is the last one I recorded. And you'll note when I click, hit this button, gold seek, it brings me directly to the image. And then if there was a note, I wanted to, we wanted to leave a note, we could create, we could merge a few cells here and create a text box if you like. So home and then merge uh, those cells and then um, write in a note, so note, um, and we could put it this way, implied volatility is important for traders, right? Uh, gold seek is a handy method for estimating implied volatility. Okay, now when I hit return, it's not formatted, so we might come up and do some formatting. So we might just justify and I think we would be okay. So basically, and then we can, something like that. And we have that note. So for instance, then if we're here and I want to point out that there's a note, we can now insert, go to developer, insert, create a new button, macro button five, button six, I think, button three, Okay, so it's going to be note on goal seek. So I'll just say note perhaps. Uh, when we touch that button, button, nothing happens. We can, perhaps we want to um, format. So we'll just redimension. Note, and then uh, give that button a function. So record macro, macro five, um, position the our cell here at mouse at cell A34, and then scroll down. And it records the action of scrolling until we align our note. with A62, stop recording, um, and then come back here and assign macro, assign macro, macro five. So when I touch this button, it brings us down to our note. And then you can enhance by putting in, just by uh, putting in borders or whatever. Okay, so that's one way of, changing, if you like, your, your spreadsheet or enhancing your spreadsheet so that it operates a little bit like a piece of software. And of course, you can make this a lot more sophisticated. You can have a directory of menus where we can have several different um, dashboards with different menus for different types of estimation. And then right across where there's important graphs or where something is buried deep down in the innards of the spreadsheet, you have made some kind of obscure estimation. If you want to draw attention quickly to a user of the spreadsheet, again, you can navigate that uh, better if you have 
this type of button type structure where the one click will bring you to a graph or one click will bring you to a note or whatever. Okay, so that's an example of how you can improve uh, the just by using the form controls in your spreadsheet um, and uh, create a much uh, better, more user-friendly type experience for the user of your uh, spreadsheet. Um, and if for yourself, coming back to your spreadsheet after six months, sometimes you've lost the thread and it's useful to um, have uh, this dashboard of buttons to assist you in navigating through uh, a, an old um, uh, workbook. Uh, 